because in my house music is forbidden you cannot speak music especially after yeah. unafeel uka kuskuru wewe you are a failure okay you failures can yeah. be telling us what they want to do failures mm-hmm. just do what they are taught and i was being compared to my friends how my friends are going to do way better than me in life you were kuboko za and slowly you begin to believe these things you know because mm-hmm. you are constantly being told this so you're yeah. slowly beginning to believe it in your head My sen my sen welcome to headlines connect with the breakdown of stories are playing my headlines Mozambian entertainment industry content ya pano tanda mchwe mbapa and target audience yes Mozambians na Malebanese abaku abaku mkuba but because you know aku rusaka pano guys that is which we mba so i might mm-hmm. use some english in this particular episode but going yeah. around chwe mba mshwa alam for day congregation so it is church but it means more of the congregation as opposed to the church which okay oh, which which you see what okay, I mean? okay so church is like the biblical yes, faith exactly. people yes, and, and church is the particular congregation where they they yes, congregate yes okay. ulukuta that's ulukuta yes okay first of all how did you get into production um making beats i never wanted to be a producer actually i mm-hmm. never at any point in my life wanted to be yeah. a, i just wanted to be a rapper mm-hmm. you know so we used to rap a lot and what not but then i would I would find myself in a position where every producer we went to mm-hmm. why ndagui producer moves at ah twange ko beat boy so it was one thing the first thing that I didn't yeah. like was making you wait like mwa ndako 17 mulindi la chemu ndaye chemu sulepe ku bivya chi takuza ah bafana kabolo ko mairo ai and you've been waiting since like 9 you nine, know what i mean yeah. and i didn't like that and i was like ah okay it's rough out here mm-hmm. you know and then the other thing was <coughs> just a producer make you a beat in a certain way <laughs> so I told myself you know, I know it seems like people don't want to make the stuff that I want let yeah. me just try and learn it you know so I stumbled yeah. so I had a friend of mine uh who's now uh he passed uh last mm-hmm. year uh my homie Ace so his elder brother uh is the one who introduced me to FL so he had the FL6 yeah. uh he was like ah you know this is what they used to make beats Mm-hmm. I'm like for real. He's like, "Yeah, this is the program they use for beats." I was like, "Ah, so I started yeah. to try try now to learn it. It was difficult, man, to loop, to mm-hmm. loop a beat." And I was like, yeah, yeah. "How do they do it?" Yeah, but later I just continued mm-hmm. to try because I wanted to start making beats for myself so I can just continue making music for myself without people really standing in my way. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I got into music production, making becoming a producer. Did you ever do any of that banga ndana ngo you had to go away to practice? No, no, so my brother had a little PC at home. So I got like a same FL6 demo mm-hmm. then I had it there. I even had like a headset so like I only had my headset so I had to connect to the PC. So I only one side used to work. <laughs> so nokufaka uko so so if you have someone listening to the beat so 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 you have to hold it one side and then you're making beat so you can't pan. Yeah. You can do left and right. That's everything's on the middle. You have to just play and what not. So that's why I would make beats from mm-hmm. and I would make a bit of money and you know help out my <coughs> sister and myself and that's how I would make a bit of money for myself. Yeah. Okay. The quality mm-hmm. woman solo work mona jarimbi. I should focus on school or maybe another career. Focusing on school was always the plan. Obviously mm-hmm. if you have been raised in a in the house you know in a, in a black home <laughs> yeah <laughs> school is the is the main plan you know mm-hmm. what i mean i did my grade 12 mm-hmm. and what not and then i went to college and <laughs> yeah. so first uh mm, i flunked college like yeah. badly like i was at nipa i was doing imis mm-hmm. and then our papers were being marked like in the uk Mm-hmm. So my mom is the one who had you like you know so in figure she could do my face she could do a queen yeah, yeah, yeah. so she sees the results first <laughs> then she just comes home and throws the paper on the bed and just saying ona ona cheva upu wa wa chita then she walks out then you yeah. look at it and you're like mm, bra so i remember when she's like okay you try again you know what i mean yeah. so i remember mm, there's number go bauka number go bauka like i was nenzo wedding like in wedding i'm even like ah yeah i went into that exam room i thinking that ah happen many this time this time many many wrote the exam results come out i flunked worse than i flunked the first time are you serious i'm just like what is going on here <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of a very tough period yeah. ahead mm-hmm. after that because now like you know if i when a parent has put in money and you have yeah. wasted the money 
Mm-hmm. It's a different ball game now. The conversation is different. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So from there now, I think it was just me trying to like trying to work on my music. You know what I mean? Trying to say, okay, I want to do music, but how do I even yeah. tell my mother? That music is for me. Like this is the thing I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I can go to Evelyn Horn and study music. And yeah. I knew that if I went to Evelyn Horn, for example, I studied music, like I would give it everything. Because I'd be like, this, yeah. this is my stuff, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But of course, which of which of which parent is going to sponsor you to go and study music at Evelyn Horn? Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially you those, those years. Yeah, yeah, those years. yeah exactly. Mm. Now maybe they might see There's some evidence. There's now. some evidence yeah. of it. Your mouth, the money they're making and whatnot. You can yeah. be like, oh, look at these guys, mommy. You know, I can be like, yeah. at least they can, they might, you know. But back then, there was no example. So I'm trying side. to understand something. Time mm. where the first exam, mm. where you also doing music. And then second time, did you continue doing music or did you put music aside to focus on Second starting? time, I did less of music. Okay. Very less of music. The first time I was yeah. spending a lot of time making beats on my friend's laptop. My friend yeah. Stabiso. Stabiso is uh, Solomon plays older brother. Okay. Yes. So you guys go. Like yes. I, like I've known Solomon since you were a kid, man. Like, okay. <laughs> that's why, like that boy, like he's my youngster. So I was very close friends with his older brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, we're, 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 we're still good friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stabiso. So Stabiso used to have a laptop and we yeah. just put FA on his laptop. I remember it was FA 8. Yeah. The Vista yeah. operation system. The my beat. So first semester, I was going to my beat. Yeah. That's what I was spending most of my time doing and whatnot. Because I was like, this is what I really want. I really want to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the second time, I was like, ah, let me do less of this now and try, you know, mm-hmm. and do. But it looks like music was just calling. Like, you know, if you do more of me <laughs> and a bit of me, a bit of school, you might even get better results, my guy. <laughs> so in all that, in yeah. all that, what were, what were your guardians' perception? Did they know you were still dancing? Did they say anything regarding how your artistic... Uh, expression was affecting your academic uh, performance? I, I I don't... Um, they pretty much hated everything I did mm-hmm. <laughs> regarding my yeah. talents. How did you move from that to what you are now? Like this producer who people know okay. as an engineer? So this, yeah. this is going to get... Uh, it's going to get a bit personal. So me and my sister lived with my mom. I would say... What do you mean you and your sister lived with your mom? You're making it sound like... Isn't that how people should live rather? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, my mom died when I was three, my real mother. Your biological my, mother? My biological mother. Yeah. Yes. I was really young. Okay. Yeah. Then my dad, my dad after that, he was convinced by his sisters that, you know, you can't manage to take care of these kids. You have to run away and just leave them, you know. So yeah. my dad left me and my sister. So we were raised by my mom's elder siblings. Okay. Who we grew to call mom. Mother, yeah. So my mom had two elder si- sisters who were, who were twins. Mm-hmm. You know, so my sister was raised by the one twin. I was raised by the other twin. Yeah. Okay. The one twin passed away. And then, you know, we all had to live together. Okay. And stuff. Yeah. So I would say that um, at the beginning, it was all right. You yeah. know, it was all right. My mom would say things, you know what I mean? My mom would say very hurtful things. In, uh, yeah. But I think the the most the most part, I was able to excuse <coughs> a lot of that stuff because I think that she was really having a tough time. You yeah. know, and I believed within myself that I was the only person who understood that, you know. Mm-hmm. So even when she took it out on me, it was like, ah, you got to take it out on somebody. So my mom didn't leave us anything. My dad, of course, after he vanished, he went to Livingston and, you know, he tried at least to work his way up and make some things happen for himself. And yeah. he reached out, you know what I mean? For mm-hmm. for what's worth, he did reach out. You yeah. know what I mean? He came back like after 13 years. That's when he showed up and he was like, you know, he's trying to have a relationship with his kids. So my mm-hmm. sister was very forgiving. For me, I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And I realized now, after after I after I buried him, <laughs> he's, he's yeah he's, he's yeah he passed yeah yes. after I buried him I realized that you know like a lot of the anger that I had towards him mm-hmm. in the beginning was yeah. anger that was fueled by other people you okay. know because I was very young to really understand what it means to be abandoned by a child by a father I mean you know what yeah. I mean as a child I was very young because mm-hmm. even my mom's face I don't remember my mom's face. I can put, I've seen pictures of my mother, my, my biological mother. I've seen yeah. pictures of her, but I've got memories, like maybe like 10 memories of her, mm-hmm. but there's no face. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't put a face there. You know, even if you show me a picture, I can't take that face and put it there. And I'm like, yeah, that's my mom. Yeah. So the only mom I got to know was that one. That's, that's the mom that I've always known, you know? So was there any artistic, like, uh, abilities and like maybe your father or mother before? Ish. My dad used to used to like dancing, but you, you know, like dancing, yeah, you're almost sitting there. Like, so where where did your then mom get the sort of hatred 
for the, the for the yeah. I never understood that that part I never I think there's even one time I mm-hmm. went to ask my grandmother I said ah, did my mom and this mom get along yeah you know and my grandmother was like why are you asking me that question I said ah because sometimes I feel like the like the anger she shows towards me like it's not really me yeah you know what I mean it felt like it wasn't me like I don't think it's really directed at me Yeah. Maybe there's something, something else, else, you know, that is triggering this anger because it doesn't make sense. I'm like I'm a kid, man. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm a kid, man. Like you can't be that angry at me. Like Yeah. Like no, it doesn't make sense. So I went to ask yeah. my grandma. My grandma's like, "No, this to get. I don't know if she lied to me." Yeah. You know what I mean? But she told me, "No, they're no, fine. Just to get along, they're fine." You know. But it really like it was stuck in my head, you know what I mean, for a yeah. while. My grandma like, "Okay, why would he ask me that question?" You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what what is this woman saying to this kid that you would think the anger comes from somewhere? So she just told me, "Ah, you know, your mother's just she's just difficult." You know, she's just difficult. She's just like that. So I was like, "Oh, yeah. cool." You know. So I think uh, maybe it came from somewhere else. Maybe there's some maybe someone maybe yeah. that's that stuff that I didn't know. Yeah. You know. So so life was not as easy as one would say. So I was doing music and whatnot and I remember I used to be in talks with Mark 44 and also Ian Chitundu at that yeah. time. And How did uh, you meet Mark 44 and Ian? I met Mark through the church like you went to the same church? No, 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 no. Like through dancing and what we go to concerts yeah. and then I met Mark. Okay. So when I met Mark 44 and then um I was really interested in and that time I was dating his young sister Tinda. So Tinda would always speak for me to Mark like you know like Trudon really loves this music stuff you know what I mean like yeah. you know you should really So Mark was like ah, okay my young sister's boyfriend you know likes things you know what I mean like sometimes they go to fun okay. So he would call yeah. me to the studio and I would go there and I would sit and you know I would help him record but Mark because Mark most of the times you find that he's got a client mm-hmm. but he needs to be somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he would call me and I remember mm-hmm. that time when you were doing CA during that period when you <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, let, let, let's Did not get into that. Let's not get into that. I didn't say anything. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I would go to the studio and I would record for him, you know what I mean? Like I would help him out recording some people yeah. and whatnot. And that's how like he was like, "Oh, cool. Like Trudon, you know, like Trudon is really interested in this stuff in there." So apparently I used to like I I bounce and I just walk back home. Yeah. You know. So Ian would see me. So Ian used to be in the main house and he would see me. Mm-hmm. So one day he stopped me. He said, "You come here." And yeah. he asked me, "Who are you?" Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And if you know Ian, you know that yeah, this yeah, sounds yeah, like yeah, Ian. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, who are you? I'm like, yeah, I know yeah. my name is Trudon and what? I said, ah, yeah. What you do here? I see mm-hmm. you. You come here. What you do? I'm like, no. Sometimes Magnus calls me to help him out, like record some people and what not. So he yeah. said, oh, how do you? Where do you come from? Say, I come from Chilenge. Mm-hmm. Said, oh, so how do you come here? He's like, ah, okay. sometimes I walk. And he's like, ah, you're conning, man. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not conning. Sometimes I walk. Like, so you when you bounce. So he said, ah, so you've bounced here. You're going back home. He said, yeah. yeah. Then he said, ah, but if you bounce, why do you come back? So that's the question he asked me. He said, why do you come back? I yeah. said I come back because I love this stuff. Like it's something I really love yeah. to do. So for him that was like a small addition for yeah. him, you know what I mean? It was like this kid like really loves this thing, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So even the time when they were thinking of expanding from IM to Radio Cafe, mm-hmm. when they were thinking of expanding, they had me in mind. Like okay. true done. You know what I mean? Like there's that kid, there's that boy. Yeah. You know who has got the hunger for this thing. So Mark Dazona just said one who told me. So no, thinking of expanding the studio, mm-hmm. you know, and making it into an actual business and not just like a studio. Yeah. You know, so we're thinking of expanding it, but we're thinking about you. Mm-hmm. You're one of the people that we're considering to come and work with us. You know, so just wait, you know, let's yeah. us finalize things and what not. So there was Dali Sochitundu was coming in as the that's the boss. Yeah. So Dali so had never met me. Mm-hmm. So Dali so that so they played some beats for Dali so that yeah. I meant and Dali so was like this kid is whack. <laughs> Like this boy is whack, bro. Yeah. You know, but Ian was like, no, but yeah, his beats are whack. Yeah, it's true, yeah. his beats are whack. But there's something about this kid. You know what I mean? There's something else that he has. Yeah. He has got this hunger for this thing that I don't see in these other kids who make tough beats. You know yeah. what I mean? This boy can be more than just a producer. Mm. You know. So Ian saw it. You know what I mean? And whatever you yeah. saw, he saw it. You know what yeah. I mean? So he was really convincing Dali. So Dali so in the end was like, okay, cool. So now at home, life is wow. You know, my mom has got a lot of money now. You know, life is good for my mom, yeah, and whatnot. But it was not really that good for us, me and my sister. So we were the people who were cleaning, we were the people who were cooking. Yeah, you know, we we, we were those people. My brother just first spoke to my mom, and he told us, "And ah, why don't you help Trudon find a job? You yeah, know what I mean, like why don't you help? Me? Like you work at council, you like you help you you've helped like you help my other brother Mtale find a job there. Why don't yeah. you help Trudon find a job as well?" She says, "Ah." With the results that you have, you listen to your get 12 and the results that you have and what mm. the only thing I can find for you is council police. Okay. okay. So I was like, okay, council police. I'm like, mm. So I have two things, right? So yeah. I'm waiting for Mag and Ian to call me for the studio. Mm-hmm. 
And again, I'm afraid to say there's a studio job because in my house, music is forbidden. You cannot speak music, especially after yeah. when you are a failure. Okay? You, you, failures can yeah. be telling us what they want to do. Failures <laughs> just do what they're taught. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's the thing. So I'm sitting there. I'm constantly reminded of how much of a failure I am. Mm-hmm. and how much i'm never going to amount to anything how yeah. my friend i was being compared to my friends how my friends are going to do way better than me in life you were quick because i end die yeah so i'm like all right cool you know so you begin and slowly you begin to believe these things you know because mm-hmm. you are constantly being told this so you're yeah. slowly beginning to believe it in your head and and and, and, and now it's sticking in your head yeah. and now you're thinking ah you know maybe you know that's what it is you know so you just become this person who is really bitter mm-hmm. but you're very silent Yeah. You know, you're very silent but you're really bitter, you know. And then you don't have that fighting spirit anymore. You don't have any reason like I I, I was not seeing anything now. Like even the music I was slowly yeah. giving up on it like ah, what what what's the point? Mm-hmm. But something was telling me no, just wait. Just, like that's wait. So I would call Ian sometimes like I would really be touched to the what, thing. What was the period between when you requested or when you were informed you might join Radio Cafe and mm. how long you had to wait? What was the period like? I think I had to wait like a couple of months. Months. Yes, I had to wait a couple of months. Yes, from the okay. time when Mag told me about them expanding and thinking yeah. about me, yeah, I had to wait a couple of months. Okay. Yeah, so it was a couple of months of enjoying whatever was going on there. So yeah. so now you've got music and you're afraid to say it. You yeah. can't say it because you die, you'll be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so how did you eventually So yeah. there was a pastor who used to come home. Mm-hmm. Um his name was Pastor Daka. Yeah. So you would come home and you would pray for my family like when my siblings are there you would pray for them and you'd prophesy yeah you know in, in their lives so for me i never wanted prophecy anywhere close to me because me i was very bitter yeah i was very bitter and and and, and i thought life was very unfair on me you know yeah. I mean, on me and my sister i thought life was very unfair for us and, and so i didn't want a prophet to walk up to me now and tell me something bad about me mm-hmm. like he comes to you and tells you You my chief, eh? What about a spirit cash and shan shan shan? You know what I mean? I'm like, you you mdala. What? You you know my life is already bad enough. You understand telling me now. You know what I mean? So now I'm thinking yeah. if this guy was to say anything negative about me in front of someone who already thinks I'm yeah. a failure. It would be wild. Know? It would be wild because now it's like there's confirmation from God man to say. You know what I mean? Like, ah, now I boost when I come but you were you were you were you were fun I. You know what I mean? So that's how it was for me and that's why I didn't want to associate with with him or even like just yeah. sit where he was. So this one time he came home and 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 no one else was there it was just me and my mom and my brother. Mm-hmm. So he came and then my mom was like no give him some water to drink and what I gave him water and then you know I was walking back and my mom said no you come sit here. Yeah. So he chose the pastor and said pray for this boy mm-hmm. and see something in this boy's life because we find out you. My yeah. mom for some reason I don't know she believed that me I was the worst child. Like okay. you know like later on I asked my mother what I used to do my mom could not tell me one thing that I used to do. Mhm. Because like I, I only used to go to church and dance. Yeah. We were never the kids who grew up like drinking and whatnot. We were just uh-huh. kids who loved video games, movies. That was us. Yeah. Music, rap music, R&B, what, name it. That was us. You know, but for some reason, people used to think that we was and whatever, which was yeah. not us. So my mom had that picture in her head. Ah, so yeah. she was hoping this be prophet would yes confirm what would she confirm always what thought, she's always yeah. thought about me. Mm-hmm. So this prophet prays, mm-hmm. and he prays, and then he he he, he, he prayed for me and my brother. So he speaks yeah. to my brother, and he touched on some things which I also thought was true. Yeah. So I was like, oh, his brother is on is on to something here. Yeah. So he looks at me and he says, "You, God <coughs> has shown me something. Now I can even see that my mom is ready." Bro. Yeah. Then he says, "You, I know, I know, like you know what you need to be doing, but mm-hmm. I don't know why you're not doing it." Yeah. Then he says, "You know, actually, I do know why you're not doing it." It's mm-hmm. because all your life you've been told you are nothing and you're never going to amount to anything that you are a failure. Yeah. So I'm thinking to myself I'm like, bra, the guy who like the person who was telling me that is sitting right next to you. Yeah. Ufuna tai sim dara yo, ufuna jaro, ufuna tai si. Like, bra, like yeah. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Mm-hmm. You know. But then that really shocked me. And that's what he said. Yeah. And he said and mom was like, "No, what, but what is it?" He's like, "No, no, no, he knows." Yeah. That's all. And I got up and I went to the bedroom and I was I was so shocked, bro. Yeah. That I said, no, this Bali must know something. If this guy can say this in front of my mom, yeah, God must be using this guy. There's something that God wants to say to me. Mm-hmm. So I called my sister, uh, 
my eldest cousin uh my, was my sister yeah yeah but messi so i called her so because she's the one who introduced him to the family yeah so i call her saying i would like to meet this man Mm-hmm. So she said, "Okay, cool, no problem. I'll, I'll organize for you." So she calls him, and then I met I met him at her house, mm-hmm. and we sit there, and he's like, "Ah, do you want it?" Was like, uh, she was like, "Ah, should I leave?" I'm like, "No, no, no, sit. I've got nothing to hide. Just, it's fine. You can yeah. sit." You know. So even before I said anything to this man, mm-hmm. he just begins to tell me. Yeah. Me, I never believed in prophecy and whatnot, that stuff, but mm-hmm. I saw it firsthand. He just begins to tell me. He just <coughs> says, "Young man, me, I know your life. Don't even tell me. Mm-hmm. I know all about your life." Yeah. So I tell him, saying, okay, cool. If you know my life. I said, if you know my life. Yeah. There are two things here, okay? There's, mm-hmm. My mom is saying I go to council police. Yeah. Now, I live in this person's home. I have to obey what this person says, mm-hmm. you know. On the other hand, there are these guys who are expanding their studio and they're thinking about me. Yeah. So you tell me where God is saying I should go. If you are telling me that God is saying I should go to council police, I will not argue. Tomorrow, yeah. so I'll tell my tonight. So I'll go to my mom and I'll tell her, mommy, yeah, I've accepted the council police job. Okay. Then he asked me, he said, What does your heart tell you? And I said, My heart tells me that I need to do music. Mm-hmm. And then he tells me, he says, You go to music and you will see how God will lift you up. Okay. Like directly, like that. Go yeah. to music and you see how God will lift you up from there. Then he says, But your family will hate you. Okay. They will hate you. Mm-hmm. They will be upset with you. Your mother will be so angry at you. Yeah. But do not fear. He said, if you fear, you yeah. will go back. And then he says, as long as you live in that house, mm-hmm. you are not going to bear anything in life. Wow. As long as you live there. Now, that's the home that I've lived my entire life. And he's telling yeah. me, as long as you live there, you're never going to be anyone in life. So your destiny is mm-hmm. outside that house. But you need you need to be very courageous. If you fear, yeah. you will not go anywhere. And from there I'm just like, yo, I went back home, my first first time I ever stood up to my mother. Mm-hmm. I said, remembering that I should not fear. Yeah. And I sat down, my mom asked me about the council police thing. Mm-hmm. And so what's your what's your say about the council police thing? And I tell her saying, no. I'm not and my it. sister yeah. was in shock. My sister was like, what? <laughs> Trudeau, what are you doing? Yeah. I said, no. And she said, what do you mean no? I said, no. That's not my... So, if I could pay the confidence at that point, is because you knew this was coming from God. It's not even... I didn't... I, from, from there, like, you see, I wasn't like 100% believing that this is from God. Yeah. You know, it was just the fact that he told me, you must not fear. Uh-huh. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Say what it is that you want to say. Don't mm. be afraid. Yeah. You know. So I said it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just said, council police is not for me, mom. Yeah. And she asked me, what do you want to do? I said, I want to do music. And mm-hmm. I say these words to her. I want to do music. Yeah. And she looks at me and said, Ufa funa. She just called Vilimba. Ufa Vilimba. Yeah. yeah. I said, yes, music is what I want to do in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just then now she went into the whole thing where she wanted to start talking. And now I had to bring him in. Because I knew if I if I bring him in, yeah. it would be for my point of authority. Mm-hmm. she won't question because she does believe in the man of God yeah so I brought him in I said no I met with Pastor Daka she said where I said at, at my missus house today yeah and he told me that I must go to music mm-hmm. and she kept quiet and she said oh okay yeah you know but after that now now I'm there now waiting now did you say that there's a studio job no I didn't mention that studio job thing Okay. I didn't mention, oh, there's even a job coming. What? I didn't mention that. Because yeah. I wasn't sure that it was, it was going to happen. Yeah. You know, in, in as much as they, they assured me that they were going to call me, but I wasn't sure because it has been months. Yeah. You know, and finally the call came. So wait, what would you have done if they didn't call you back? What was your next move away from Ben? I had no plan, bro. That was, uh, that was all I had. That was all I was banking on. Yeah. I was banking on that phone call. That, that phone call better come because I don't yeah. know what I'm going to do with my life. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to tell me. My mother is going to just keep pushing it. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, and finally, the call they came. Call, yeah. You know, Ian calls me and tells me, come to PHI tomorrow. Because mm-hmm. well, we're moving the studio from Villawanga to PHI. So, come to, I'll give you directions. We come to PHI. Yeah. Bro, when I left home that day, I had 350. I removed 300, which I gave my sister. Mm-hmm. I said, hold on to this money. Okay, this is yeah. the money I made from the beats I made. Mm-hmm. Hold on to this money. Now, yeah. Buela, I end up studio. Mm-hmm. So he says, okay, cool. You know, 
you go and whatnot. Yeah. And I went to the studio. Long story short, I yeah. never went back home. Okay. How d- <laughs> <laughs> now what, I don't want people what, what, I, I don't want people to think at nine that you know that you didn't say when you got there. So I got there, I found Ian and Dallas. I didn't even know that was yeah. Dallas because Dallas was very friendly. If you meet Dallas for the first time, like you wouldn't even know he's the guy. Yeah. You just be very friendly to you, like, oh, how are you doing, man? How are you doing? You just think he's just some guy. Yeah. So I even ignored him half of the time. I was just talking to Ian. <laughs> you not knowing and dear boss or many You know what I mean? Yeah. And so Ian sees me and then Ian said, Um, I would like you to sleep over here. Yeah. Because I want to teach you some things. Mm-hmm. So when the pastor said, Go and you see what God is going to do. Yeah. I thought what he meant was I'm going to go there and I'm going to be given a check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, ah, <laughs> it's going to be money here I'm going to see. Because it's, it's going to be shit here, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not knowing that what God had already, me leaving the house to yeah. go there, it had already begun. Mm-hmm. I went there. The first thing that God did was mm-hmm. tell Ian to tell this boy to sleep here. Mm-hmm. So you sleep here. Now yeah. sleep, bro. Yeah. Bro, I get home at 19 hours. I'm in beef. If I get home and it's dark, my mom yeah. will not, I'll never hear the end of it. But you're asking me to crash over. Now, yeah. this is all in my head. I'm not telling you. <laughs> it's all in my head. Yeah. Then I remember again and said, do not fear. fear. I said, all right. So yeah. to him, I played it like, cool. Oh, cool, man. Cool. But yeah. in, my, in my heart, bro, I've, I'm battling in my head. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. bruh, you better have a good reason here. Then now it was 20 hours, 19 hours clicked. Ding! Mm-hmm. The phone calls began to land. Where are you? Mm-hmm. And I just see the phone ring. I see it's my mom. I just put it down. I don't cut it. I just put yeah. it down. Okay. Because when I saw it, my heart skipped a beat. The fear yeah. came. And then I just put the phone down. And I said, continue. Mm-hmm. What, you're, what you're teaching me. Yeah. But I am afraid, <laughs> bro. So Ian would see me like, this boy is like, he's, 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 he's not at <laughs> Something ease. is going on. Something is going on. Yeah. Here. So he saw that my phone kept ringing. So he announced me that, why are you not picking up your phone, man? Mm. I said, I. Then, I. then I said this to him. I said, if I pick up this call, you will never see me again. Okay. If I pick up any of these calls, that you, you will never see me here again. So he laughed. He said, how do you mean, man? I said, I'm telling yeah. you. Like, <laughs> you will never see me here again. So let's yeah. just continue. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, he didn't, want, he didn't want to involve himself too much. Like, yeah. I, I don't want to be all up in this kid's business. You know, that's, that's his business. Yeah. Anyway, so... Now, I am there, phone calls arrive, messages began to come. So, messages, I'll just open the message and I just yeah. see it, Iwe, delete. <laughs> <laughs> I open another one, true yeah. delete. Uh-huh. When I just see it, how it starts, I just read the first line, bah, yeah. I delete. Because I knew that if I read this message, immediately, yeah. I will fear, I would not question, I'll uh-huh. be afraid again. Because I became that kid who was so afraid yeah. of the people that I lived with. I was so afraid of them. It, it, it moved now from, I don't respect you. Mm. I'm just afraid of you. So that's why I was, so I was like, here, if I fear, here. So I just kept the phone down. Yeah. Day number two. So Magnus used to sleep at the studio because mm-hmm. we, we, we used to live there before we got married. He used yeah. to live there. So now Ian says, okay, look, I'm going back home to Vilawanga and then I'm going to go for work. So the Magnus, so he left me transfer money. He said, yeah, I use transfer money for you. Magnus is going to come and then you can go home. Ah, Mag calls me and tells me, ah, brah, I'm caught up somewhere. I'm not going to land. Yeah, okay, I'm actually going to sleep over at my sister's. Mm-hmm. I was just going to crash over at my sister. So you just have, you just you just sleep over again. Day number three comes. Mm-hmm. Magnus is supposed to come again because Ian now was was going to work at Miracle Life. Yeah, Magnus is supposed to come. Magnus doesn't show up again. That's three days, bro. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just like, ah, now I'm dead. <laughs> ah, this is death now. They even stopped calling me now. Yeah, you know, they just write me a message. Come, 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 stay. Quite stink, actually. Just stink, I must have fika, chill. Yeah, fika stink. You know, I just, ah, delete again. I put the phone down. Because mm-hmm. in my mind, I kept just saying, do not fear. Do yeah. not fear. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Don't be afraid. And day number four, Ian comes to the yeah. studio. And he's like, ah. So he notices that I'm still wearing the same clothes. He's like, did you go home? Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, sad. I didn't go because Magnus has been busy. I mean, ah, Magnus. You know, then he says, ah, you know what? Just as well, you are here. Yeah. Because Magnus said, when a pump, you need to go to. So I'm sure that's what Magnus, that's what kept Magnus busy because they were preparing for the trip to go to Kenya yeah. as Lotta House. Mm-hmm. So he says, ah, Magnus and them need to go to Lot- need to go to Kenya as Lotta House. Yeah. They're going there for a week. Mm-hmm. So someone needs to stay here because I don't live here. So someone needs to stay here. So just as well you're here, ah, you might as well just stay here for this week. Yeah. In that moment, bro, mm-hmm. I knew that's what he meant when he said, God, 
you see what God is going to do. Yeah. And I just told, I remember telling Magnus, Magnus, I cannot go back home. Mm-hmm. My life has begun right now. Okay. And Magnus said, ah, except do your thing, man. That's what Magnus said. <laughs> Magnus just said, ah, do your thing, man. I told Ian, and Ian yeah. now asked, and Ian asked me, yeah. you know, about my family and whatnot. That's when I had to explain to him why I was ignoring the calls and whatnot. That's, I, that's when I had to break it down to him. He's yeah. like, oh, okay, no, I hear you, I get you. One week, my sister calls me, finally. Yeah. To pick up my sister's call. My sister says, are you okay? I said, mm-hmm. yes, I'm fine. She said, where are you? I said, I'm in PHI. She said, okay, tell me exactly where you want to come see you. Yeah. I tell her where I'm at. My sister came through. My sister saw me in Shinaina. <laughs> and so my sister in cr- one week? In one week. In one week. In that same in a in few days. I mean, it's the six days. Yeah. My sister saw me and just like, ah, children, you look free. You look happy. Yeah. Like I've never seen you look like that in a very long time, my brother. Yeah. And I remember that day we sat outside and my sister cried. And mm-hmm. my sister broke down like, and she asked me, saying, are you coming back home? I said, nah. I'm mm-hmm. not coming back home, Sissy. And she said, all right. But just as well, the next lesson she told me now, she tells me, ah, do you know that mom was actually, gave us an ultimatum mm-hmm. that by October, you and I were supposed to leave our house. Yeah. That's when she told me that. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, ah, what do you mean? He's like, no, that time you, you left in August. She actually gave us October to leave. So you leaving was just yeah. God just removing you. I remember she went to, she saw Magnus and she told Magnus, oh, no, take care of my young brother. Mm-hmm. You know, and she told me, okay, look, I'm going to get all your clothes and I'm going to put them in a bag. And I'll take him to my cousin's house, my messy, the same place where I met the pastor. Yeah. And you can go and pick out what you want from there. Because I was wearing the same clothes. Mm-hmm. The same clothes that I left with. So I said, yeah. pick out all your clothes, pick out what you want and leave out what you don't want. And you can, and you can go and start, go and start your life. And my sister just, then, my sister blessed me and said, go and start your life, my brother. And go mm-hmm. and live. Yeah. And that's how church will look with that. Was born. Wow. <laughs> 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 so if 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 you were to speak to like another producer right now, maybe mm. this guy is a kid, could be a girl or boy. I remember a situation where um, similar to yours where mm. family in, in opposition, this kid is scared to pursue what they're actually passionate about. Mm. What advice regarding fear would you give these people? Fear, mm. first thing is do not, like, fear, bro. fear will kill you, bro. Mm-hmm. Fear will kill you. Fear will take away so many things from you. Fear will, yeah. fear will make you, you know, what fear, the other thing that fear did to me, mm-hmm. fear puts you in a position where you begin to feel like you have got nothing to offer, but you have a lot to lose. Okay. So what happens is that for me, because of how I was being told I was nothing, I was going to amount to nothing. Mm -hmm. I began to believe that stuff to a point that I was afraid of people leaving me Mm -hmm. because I didn't think that I was worthy to give anyone anything valuable. Mm -hmm. So every time, so even when I was at Radio Cafe, I feared losing that. I feared Ian waking up one day and just saying, ah, youngster, (laughs) he's not working, man. Yeah, I was afraid of that. And do you know what that led me to? Mm-hmm. It led me to meeting new people and telling them lies about where I'm at. But what would be an example of what that looked like? So let me tell you this one. I met David. I mean, remember the guy who killed David Kalinani? David Kalinani. He's a the Malawian from, rap yeah, from yeah, Malawi. Yeah, yes. yeah, I know the guy. Yeah. So David Kalinani came to the studio mm-hmm. from Malawi when he came to the studio and he was featured. You know, that's the first time he was featuring on Ebo Chungu's Say Hello to the Bad Guy song. Yeah, yeah. So you you get to a point where now you want to have this guy. So I felt like I wanted to have this guy mm-hmm. around me. Like in case these guys turn their backs <laughs> on me, this guy can have me. Yeah. Because now I don't think, because now you're not thinking that you've got anything to offer because mm-hmm. you don't know your potential because you've yeah. been told that you are nothing. And in, in as much as I was not in that place anymore, those yeah. words were still like in me. Mm-hmm. So to get them out. Yeah. That's the only way you have to get those words out. And, and so that's what I said. If you want to help someone, yeah. you have to change the way they think. That's yeah. the only way you can help them. You can never help them. Even an artist, you can make beats for them. You can write songs for them and whatnot. But if you don't yeah. change the way they scheme, mm-hmm. you're not going to go anywhere. That artist will always just come back to exactly what they were and think whatever it is that they want to think. So yeah. for me, my mindset, Ian yeah. tried so hard to break my mindset. Yeah. Because he, he saw that this kid is mediocre. 
You know what I mean? Like he's, a, he, he's a kid who's got so much potential, but he's mediocre. He's yeah. not a fighter. You know, he quits really fast. He gets angry really fast. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I thank God for those guys because they were very patient with me. Mm-hmm. So imagine now I'm telling these lies like, these guys don't even buy food here for me. <laughs> imagine that. Yeah? These are, yeah. Bruh, <laughs> I'm telling you, these are not things that I'm ashamed to, to, to say like, because I know what yeah. this thing can do to wow. a person. Yeah. And I'm saying these things about Daliso. About mm-hmm. Magnus, about Ian Stu. These are people, bro, who have sacrificed to teach me stuff and pay me. For the very first time in my life, I ever saw payment given to me. Mm-hmm. Trudon, he is a payment every yeah. month. Ndramazako is mm. for the work that you've not done, for the work yeah. that we have been teaching you to do. He is a payment. Yeah. Like a buzzer, you go to school, you to You know what I mean? Yeah. And here I am saying all these crazy things about them yeah. to someone who I just met. met. Crazy. But because I am so afraid of them and not knowing what I'm capable of, not knowing that I, I have so much to give. And yeah. now, you know what? <clears throat> funny thing about that? Mm-hmm. David Kalinani hits up Daliso and yeah. sends Daliso the messages. So that Daliso, you sent you. yes, that I was sending David Kalinani. I said, ah, guys, what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, here? Yeah, this yeah, kid yeah. is, you know what I mean? What's cutting? Now imagine how disappointed they Ish. might have, they might have felt. Yeah. Like, ah, we're trying to help this kid. But you know the funny thing now about yeah. that story? <laughs> they never told me. But they knew. They knew. All along, brah. Like, brah. Like, that mm. part That part of my life like almost brings me to tears. Yeah. Because, like, they knew, brah. You know what I mean? Like, all along, they knew. Yeah. This is what this kid is saying. But they never changed how they acted towards me. When did but you find out? I found out years later, brah. After yeah. I even left Radio Cafe. Then I was doing a job with Ian and we'll yeah. go headed to the studio. And Ian tells me, he said, You know, we knew the stuff you told David Kalinan. <laughs> and I was like, What? Yeah. He's like, We knew that stuff you told David. Then we even go in the studio, find Magnus. And then he said, Magnus, remember that stuff that you know, said David Kalinan? Then Magnus yeah. was like, Ah, oh, that stuff I don't know, I don't know feeding him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and they yeah. laughed yeah. about it. So in my mind, I'm thinking, What kind of people are these? Mm-hmm. Because any person, bruh, that I would know, even I would yeah. let you go immediately. These are stuff you're saying about me, bruh. Ah, bounce, but do this. You yeah. out. But these people, bruh, never changed how they acted towards me. They gave me a shot. They gave me an actual shot. Like, youngster, we're giving you a shot to make something yeah. out of your life. So, all that, bruh, for me to get out of that yeah. mindset and become, and that's how I became this person who mm. says what I mean to say. Mm. And I say it, and I'm not apologetic <laughs> about it. Because I know what it takes when you when you begin to, i told myself don't yeah. be a liar mm-hmm. don't lie to people mm-hmm. don't lie true don't don't lie because you've lied before mm-hmm. and this is what it did you know you know how bad it was i was dating a girl at that time bro i was so afraid of losing that girl i lied to her that i had an illness okay you see well, how, you see how bad <laughs> it is i was so afraid of losing I, I was so afraid of losing that's what fear does so if you're hearing me right so, now, that's so what I, fear so does. So the thing man. is, we're not even operating from the value that you can offer. You are operating from pity. From pity, that yes. So you want people to pity you yeah. because when people pity you, they stay around you. Yeah. So now you keep telling this story, but you keep telling you a sad story. Mm-hmm. And then now you notice that you've told you a sad story 10 times and people already know your story. Start adding on to yeah. make it sound very sad. So today when I see kids who post these my things, oh no, like, you know, I, I, I post them on social media, you know, wanting people to get given it. I just yeah. call them and I tell them, just stop that nonsense they're doing right now. Stop yeah. it. This is not a path you want to take for yourself. Trust me, I've been there. Mm-hmm. I know what it does. You know. So, I've been, so I was working on pity, like wanting people to pity me, mm. you know, being manipulative like that, you know. And I remember when that girl found out that I was lying about that illness, she yeah. was really broken. So now it will really break you when people hate you for a lie that you told. Now they hate you. Now they've got a reason to hate you. Yeah. Now they've got a reason to leave you now. You actually even gave them a reason to leave to you. Leave, Maybe then yeah. they're never going to leave you. Because yeah. Ian Magnus and Darius, so they never left me. They never did. It's funny. You know what I mean? So that is what fear can really do yeah. to you. So once you begin to endorse this thing of being afraid to express yourself, being afraid of it, like try as much as possible to get your family on your side. And if your mm-hmm. family is fine, like, okay, your family is just wild. They just don't want. Mm-hmm. But you're going to have to produce a certain result. Yeah. You know, you can't just keep going at it. The first thing that I tell people is get an education. Don't mm-hmm. be like me. Don't say church. No, I wish I did 
succeed at that yeah. you know what i mean that yes there are moments where i wish i did succeed at that because now i think yeah. my brain can operate where i'm saying i can consume knowledge yeah. you know I mean? i'm actually even planning and saying i want to go back to school and do something for myself you know what i mean yeah. and whatnot because education guys that's the best gift you can ever give yourself mm-hmm. you know what i mean educate yourself you know yeah. and try and get your family on your side as much as you can they might not get it today but mm-hmm. they might get it a bit later on You okay. know, it might not be easy right now to to convince them, but don't yeah. fight them. Don't do what I did. Don't fight them. I'm not saying no, yeah. just ignore them and go ahead and just leave the house and go and stay somewhere else. Yeah. No. That is not a good thing to do because I knew even like how what like what how it killed my relationship with my family mm-hmm. because even now when it came to my wedding it was even much difficult. You know, yeah. because now you need them. Because me I was ready to abandon all of them. I went 10 years without any of them. They all except my sister. Yeah. So now I'm just like I can do without them. I can get Dali so Magnus and Ian to go to speak to Lola for me. Mm-hmm. But my pastor just tells me said my guy it's not about you fam. You got a wife now. You have to think about the other person. It's not just you. Yeah. Families have to come together. What if they ask the question where's your family? Was Anka Fshan? If Fshan was Anka. Was Anka said no me and my family no we got beef bro. You know what I mean? No, they, they didn't keep me well bro. You know what I mean? Like no nah, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is not going to be the answer that you're going to give. So yeah. you're going to have to tuck in your pride. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and finally I got to really express to my mother how I felt and I wrote her this long message which of course backfired yeah because it's an african parent you know <laughs> not saying that my mom is a terrible human being it's just an african thing you know yeah. you just can't approach elderly people and tell them <laughs> things that you're feeling yeah. and what it's just an african yeah. thing you know so yeah. but then I was really for me I did that for me not to have any resentment towards her mm-hmm. that even when she comes to my wedding I will honor my mother yeah with all my heart and when i see her there i will be so happy that my mother came and saw what this music vidimba yeah. has done for me <laughs> <laughs> when you went to radio cafe as a mm. producer how did you eventually become an artist at radio cafe um I, I, th- that was another part again where people didn't because ian didn't want me to I, ian actually didn't want me to be an artist okay. ian wanted me to be an engineer the guy in the back which yeah. i am now ian yeah. wanted me to be this guy that i am now Okay. Yeah, and and he had a point. Now I look at it I said okay, he had a point. But yeah. then I I felt like when I remember he asked me say what do you want to be an artist? Mm-hmm. And I said because there are things that I feel I can say that a lot of people are not saying. You know, so I had all these songs, you know, that's how mm-hmm. I made Dinka Mwombele is. And what because I felt like there are so many topics that people are not touching on yeah. that I can touch on. Mm-hmm. And that's why I really wanted to be an artist. Mm-hmm. You know. So Ian didn't want that at all. Ian didn't want me to be an artist. For music for me, I think what really helped me out was Bitter Sweet. Mm-hmm. You know it's one thing to have a lot of people <clears throat> hear you and think you are talented and you can rap yeah. but it's another thing when a person hears you for the very first time mm-hmm. and says and does something about it. Yeah. And for me that's what I appreciated about Kapembo. Mm-hmm. You know Kapembo was my Dr. Dre to Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's, the, that's that's how I look at him. He was my Dre. Yeah. You know Kapembo was my Dre. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he heard me for the first time and he's just like ah yeah. Young man come to Beatles with this started. Yeah. You know, and I went to Bitter Sweet, and then I'm waiting <clears> there. People are doing poems. When I'm, I'm even shaking, now I'm just like, yeah, because I've never been on on a stage like that before. I'd never been on a stage. Serious? Yeah, only as a dancer. Because you know, I was I was present when you did that, but for me, I couldn't see any of that fear or mm. anxiety. It, you seem yeah. you seem very confident. In fact, you know what I said when I when I saw you for the first time, I was mm. like, this guy seems arrogant. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> If you ask Fred that mumbo, that that's the first thing I told those guys when I saw like this guy is arrogant. <laughs> no, you 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 almost like you're right. No, but they were like no, you just don't know him. He's a yeah? cool guy. Yeah, that's no, I am yeah, but maybe yeah, but, but I, I because I think the courage that I had and the yeah. confidence was coming from the fact that I came from dance. So mm-hmm. dance like, like when I get on stage, yeah. all that goes away. Mm-hmm. So before getting on like I'm always just like shaking in my boots like yo like I even feel like in Zadwala. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when I get there and I just start or the music just starts, then I can get into it and I can just do my thing and what not. So when I got on stage there I was mm-hmm. really afraid. Yeah. Like yo, bro. So when I did my thing and then Kapembo says no, this is a guy who was thinking of signing. He didn't even have the conversation with me <laughs> about signing me. You know what I mean? He I just, see, no, he never Kapembo never had the conversation about oh, thinking of signing you. He went to announce it first. Wow. This is yeah. the guy who I think Bittersweet want to venture into music yeah. and this guy is one of the artists that is one of is the first artist that yeah. want to sign. Kapemba when he saw for me that meant yeah. a lot because when he saw me <clears throat> he didn't see an artist that he yeah. just wanted to he saw an artist that he wanted to sign. Mm-hmm. Because he was surrounded by so many boys, by so many rappers. Yeah. And now he sees you and just says this same boy. 
And he made me yeah. that confident that I can step on any stage and I would not be afraid of anyone. Like even that's how I even go to battle XSIQ. Like he just told me, you can yeah. do it. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go. Let's go do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's just that thing. So Bittersweet was the first, they were the first people to ever give me a shot as an artist. Yeah. You know, no, no, no. I wouldn't say the first. I would say GA. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mag 44 gave us a shot as GA when yeah. we came from GA, you know. Yeah. But then GA obviously didn't go further, you know, because the vision that Magnus had. By the way, Natasha said she was involved in GA. Where, did you know Natasha by Yes. Then? I've known that okay. guys, I've known Natasha since she was like 10. Okay. She was 10 years. She was always she's always been like my guy. Yeah. My yeah. <laughs> my baby. You yeah. know what I mean? So even that time we're in GA. So mm-hmm. for her, like even the thing she tells me now, like you inspired me so much because everything I do a lot, except maybe the singing, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of what I do, I learned from you. Because you could rap and you could dance. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you would rap and people would be like, yo, this guy can rap. Yeah. And you could dance, and people would be like, yo, this guy can dance. You know what I mean? So yeah. you're like, you were a guy who could do a lot of things. So for her, it was like, Trudon is like, you know. So I remember yeah. playing an old song once, and then she's like, this was my goat. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, not this one now. This one is chilled. <laughs> this one, this one was my goat. This one was just everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. So I knew Natasha since she was like 10, you know? Yeah. So she grew up in my eyes. So even when I when I heard that rap, at first I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And then you can rap, except, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so GA was the first, you know. So, but then <coughs> Bittersweet was the first to officially like put me out yeah. there, like even like pumping money, you know what I mean? Take me to radio stations and what? Yeah. G- like Bittersweet was the first, you know. And after Bittersweet, of course, Brave only came in, mm-hmm. and you can't, you you cannot. At that time, obviously, we we downplayed what what Brave only had done, but I think we we didn't, we, yeah. we were not mature enough to understand the power of the name that it carried. And before what it before you for. get into that, did mm. they give you an option? Because you are obviously with Radio Cafe then. Mm. Did, did they give you an option to say you can not be part of this? How did they sell you on the dream of getting to be part of Brave Only? Your oh, cafe, no, 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 no. You... They gave me an option. Mag yeah. actually came to talk to me about it. Mm-hmm. So, so came... what did he say? So he was like, um, so he said, you, you're big on, you're big on courage and f- being fearless. Mm-hmm. And that's what, and, and so he said, I'm trying to do this thing with Steven. Mm-hmm. and it's about being fearless you know having a group of people who are yeah. fearless and can mm-hmm. just go out there and do god's work you know yeah. and you i see you to be a person who is very fearless because he wasn't even referring to my story yeah. he was referring to a lot of other things that i was able to do like i've seen you like you you can just drop an ep and say it's only available 24 hours yeah and 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 for real it's only to have you know what i mean like yeah. you you can do crazy things like that and, and yeah. you are so courageous that you you just have that Thing. And it's like, so it was like, I yeah. would really love you to be part of it because I think it really goes with what you believe as a person. You know, you believe in being fearless and being courageous. Yeah. And that was all me. And immediately just said, being fearless, ah, I was sold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, say less, bro. Say less. Let's do this. Okay. You know, yeah. So it wasn't an automatic because no, you just need to go. Yeah. 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 So. When did you reconnect with Solomon and how did you sort of relate with the other artists like Esther? At that particular point. Okay, so Solomon, Solomon came, so I started coming to the studio because he wanted to join the studio. Mm-hmm. So he would bring his beats. So I remember there's a time when, so he sent some beats to, mm-hmm. um, to Mac. I think there was a time when where they put out an ad to say they're looking for other producers. Yeah. Yeah, it's because, uh, yeah, so Solomon had sent some beats. Obviously, some other people sent some beats. So mm-hmm. Ian heard Solomon's beats. And he's yeah. like, mm, this boy, yeah, this boy has got that thing, you know. That's when he called Solomon to come to the studio. Mm-hmm. So Solomon came. So I saw Solomon, like, ah, Solomon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and so, like, he started making the beats. And I, so that, that's how I got to reunite with, with Solomon, yeah. you know, when he came to the studio and whatnot. And mm-hmm. that's how I got to be. And I remember, you know, like, you know, when people start comparing you two, you know what I mean? So she and yeah. myself, you know, this boy can make this better than you can. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm mean, like, ah, it doesn't matter, man. It's my youngster. But then even <laughs> you know, yeah. I remember one time he, Solomon showed me something. So when it comes to 808s, right? In FL, for people who use FL, mm-hmm. they, so like there's like a thing called cut itself that you click. Yeah. Okay. So when you're using an 808, it's got a long tail. So most of the times mm-hmm. you do doom, 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 doom. So yeah. before it goes to the second note, it the tail can that that note can go into the next one and then it can cause a distortion. Mm-hmm. So he knew that you have to click the cut itself so that the eight oh eight cuts before the other the other note comes in. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know that. 
So yeah. I put the eight to it and then it was doing that thing. So he was like, ah, no, let me show you something. And then I remember just like, no, I know. Yeah. You know, just being pompous. <laughs> you know, I know you were. And then, so, and then he hit me with a statement that just shut me up. He just said, ah, look, bro, I'm just trying to help. You know, we all learn from each other and whatnot. And mm-hmm. that day, and I'm like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Let's yeah. Let him show you. Yeah. And so he clicked, he like, and I'm just like, ah, oh. You know what I mean? And yeah. from that day, I learned that, ah, you know what? This is unnecessary. You know, so I, I, yeah. I rejoined with Solomon during that same period. Yeah. Esther Chung, of course, it was so easy. Esther Chung has been my sister for forever. Yeah, you know. For so, did you meet from Bittersweet or before Bittersweet? We met at Bittersweet. Okay. Yeah. So Esther Chung, we met at Bittersweet. So the thing, the funny story about Esther Chung is that uh, she was in a group called um, Beautiful Noise. Yes. Which one was that? It, it, it was a group. It was a, the, the two of them, high in a French talo. So Esther used to sing and she used to don't. No, yeah, Esther used to sing. Mm-hmm. She used to do the poetry. Mm-hmm. But Esther also do some poetry sometimes. Yeah, but Esther used yeah. to do the used to sing and do poetry. Mm-hmm. So I remember Bittersweet now was looking into signing a female artist. Mm-hmm. You know. So Kapemba came to me and he said, Trudan, um, is it how much Kapemba believed in me? Like would come and ask yeah. me things like, okay, want to sign a female artist. Who, 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 who do you think we should sign? You yeah. Know? So he gave me an example. So he had three girls. So there was Chitalu, Esther herself, mm-hmm. and another girl. Mm-hmm. Then I pointed at Esther. Mm-hmm. Then I said, ah, that's the artist. Then he says, are you sure? I said, yeah, we're in the artist. We have a smart artist. We're in the artist. We're in the artist. We're in the artist. We're in the artist. You know, because Esther was like, Esther was, that's what I said. Esther, my man, beat up. Ah, she just <laughs> plays with you people. Esther sings. Like, yeah. Esther really sings. In that time, she was really singing because she used to sing just predominantly in English. Yeah. You know, so she used to, re- so she learned how to sing in English. So she's got English runs. So mm-hmm. Vanak is very strict with how much you can sing. So you can't do uh, yeah. which <laughs> you can't do that. You know what I mean? Because you'd be like, mm, bro, what are you butchering the language? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't allow her to really express herself the way she can really, but she can really sing. So when yeah. I heard that, I said, Who in the artist? And it had nothing to do with, oh, I saw her personality. I just heard that sing. And I just yeah. said, Who you? The artist do it. You mm-hmm. know. So that's when you know they they went to Esther, and Esther was part of Bittersweet. Yeah. As well, when yeah, she was coming at that time. She was mm-hmm. coming. I'm not saying that I'm the reason why, but <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, <laughs> joking. I'm joking. Yeah, but that's how I that's how I got to know yeah. Esther. So we and me and Esther we've been brother and sister from that yeah. and all the way into Brave Only, even way after Brave Only, even today now. You know, yeah. yeah. In where woman to act, why mona radio cafe okay for me even mm. before it was radio cafe. Why yeah. when I went to Magoko Bariam Bira. You started out with people like Esther and Brave Only and even Bittersweet, mm. M7 and all these guys. There's been a sentiment where from when I got to Christian industry, I'm saying, but I've still been to. It's like it's been the same five people. Mm. What is your perspective on that narrative? Uh, it's the Big Brother syndrome. What's that? <laughs> The big brother syndrome is the syndrome where like Christians we 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 don't have is we don't have that thing of competitiveness. Okay, so mm-hmm. we don't try to do better than the previous person. We always look at the people who came before us as our big brothers. So in that sense, we can never we can never position ourselves in a way where we do I we go ahead of them. Mm-hmm. We believe that if I do the same things that Pompey did, mm-hmm. that is success because we deemed it success when Pompey did it. So you have that notion in your mind that, oh, because Pompey is here, mm-hmm. Pompey is my big brother. You know, we just need to support Pompey. You know, so yeah. you can never want to compete with Pompey, you know, because mm-hmm. in the Christian community, competition is seen as a sin. No, we can't be competitive. No, no, no. We need to have a competitive thing because yeah. I think that is how Lotter House did it. They yeah. did not. They didn't come through with, oh, Ephraim, our big brother. You know what I mean? They came yeah. with their own thing and said, we're going to make our own stance mm-hmm. and our own impact. They went to ice prince. There was a lot of house ice prince. You know what I mean? There yeah. was the church turned and was pissed at them, mm-hmm. but they didn't fear. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they didn't fear. They just continued to do what, and they made their statement. Mm-hmm. And that's why they. So we need. You need to have another group of youngsters who are willing to go beyond them. But the reason why is because mm-hmm. the big brother syndrome is there. Mark Forty Four is my big brother. You know, so you always deem him bigger than you. So mm-hmm. you can never want to compete with him. You never want to beat him. You know. So yeah. he's he's always going to. So that's the reason why we always, we always have Pompey, Mark Forty Four. You know, these guys being the bigger artists every time because no one wants to compete with them. We all just want to be polite because we think not yeah. competing is humbleness and that's the Christian way of doing things. Could you moon somewhere? We will win a Christ too. I still operate by what the Bible says. Mm. 
ni vesi nchwinga mpela inga chita support your perception ya kuti bafu ya wale chita compete even as they I don't are think I, I don't think that there's a verse that I can give you specifically mm-hmm. that would say that you know you must compete but I mm-hmm. think that all of us we are called to reach out to a lot of may I believe that when yeah. Jesus said go out to the world and preach the gospel mm-hmm. he didn't say let's go and build churches and have one place where everyone can come to I yeah. think that we all need to exist in all these professions like mm-hmm. Christians have to be doctors you know like yeah. the difference between a good doctor and a bad doctor when I say good and bad what I mean I'm, I'm meaning according to their expertise mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying like okay they're evil doctors who are great creating viruses <laughs> to destroy you know what i'm saying yeah but the, what they have in common is that they all studied they mm-hmm. all went to uni you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. but then like personality is their like character is different i was not called here to be what pompey became pompey mm-hmm. can only be pompey you yeah know what i mean it can't be mag it can't be anyone else so i can only be church but i need to have my own goal and my own aspirations to say this way i want to uh, this way i want to go and this in yeah. this are the crowd these are the people that i want to reach out to and this is how i want to reach them and i think that if yeah. we start spreading out like that mm-hmm. you will find that the gospel I mean, we don't just have five people doing mm-hmm. things you have a lot of people looking at so many different situations and what not but yeah. right now it's like there is an example that everyone wants to follow okay you see it's all like said there's a rotor house route mm-hmm. so is that the rotor house route or the Ephraim route because because now they, they say there are two things please yes yeah yeah in the Ephraim and yeah old school baja eh baja ba we hit worship you know eh? <laughs> <laughs> you see what i mean so now people are looking at it as yeah. oh we have to belong to one of these mm-hmm. so it's either you belong to the lotter house and if you go into the lotter house route mm-hmm. then the mag at the pinnacle of it like this yeah. is the this is the max the ceiling this is yeah. the ceiling you know mm-hmm. you can't go beyond this mm-hmm. so because people because people are looking at wow what did they do they went to Kenya we also need to go to Kenya when these guys went to Uganda everyone had to go to Uganda oh, yeah. we need to go to Uganda you see what I'm saying because that's where they went but no one is thinking i need to go to SA yeah no i need to go to Tanzania no i need to go but then you want to see if you went to Tanzania you won't see that success because it is not Kenya it's not mm-hmm. where a lot of house went you see what i'm saying so pretty much they're trying to but if folks start replicate if you actually kapoka exactly it, yes instead of making something uh-huh. that, because you know. someone told me this and you see when lotter house came and radio cafe came it was like and why even like the secular i remember that time the secular cast even to say mm, the christians the sound that they have mm. like they are different these guys like they are, the stuff is high quality you know the way they are making it so there was a movement that was coming there yeah is what i mean but mm-hmm. then the idea the the overall plan was to evolve that movement Mm-hmm. you know not to just keep it there as it was yeah. but it's like it stuck it just did whatever it did and it stayed there you see what i mean it, it mm-hmm. didn't evolve no one came in to try and evolve. Yeah. maybe brave only tried mm-hmm. to evolve it a little bit but even then you know circumstances beyond no which were in our control <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say beyond no, very much in our control but yeah. we decided just to be stupid <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and 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 things that's that i think brevon would have been one of those things would have taken it to a next level and yeah. next level so yeah man so i think that is the one of the biggest so if you want to make music it's good to learn from the people that came before yeah. you learn but the idea of learning is to be educated enough to face new challenges mm-hmm. you know what i mean for you to be able to yeah. face new things it's not for you to be educated enough to to continue facing what they faced you can't do that don't right? so yeah. i think that's what people need to really look at they said okay lotter house went this far pompey has gone this far this is so much pompey has done and pompey has mm-hmm. has his run is rest if he's still going and cool you know what i mean yeah. but these guys have done the most for us they have showed us the possibility of what we can do now let's take it up and take it to the next level mm-hmm. the next generation to the next level but we can't keep thinking no i just i, I just have to work with mac 44 because yeah. if i work with mac then nish na fkapo na fkapo you know what i mean and that, and that and that is the thought process that is yeah. really blocking the christian community from the lotter house side yeah. i'm sure it's the same thing na kwena eh no efremu you know yeah. you have to do shan efremu shan shan and i think that syndrome is what kills everything else so what three practical steps would you give someone that has listened to your advice and they're mm. trying to go their own lane as opposed to konge for bari chama guys already before what three practical steps would make them at least get close to achieving that uh first is do not be afraid yeah that's the free, that, that's that, that's like the most important one mm-hmm. do not be afraid to be different yeah yeah that, like don't don't fear to be different don't 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 fear even if they say no vochi tv like that's not the way it should be done mm-hmm. if you believe that is how you want to do it you do it and you show the results for yourself yeah. you know so that's the first thing do not be afraid to um monitor your progress organically this is another thing that i like to tell people okay mm-hmm. monitor your progress organically don't try to do your maps numbers 
<laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. In a week cuz like oh your mouth does 2 million views in a week or in yeah. three days. I'm also don't look at it from that way. If you've got five followers on your on your Insta, mm-hmm. give yourself a target. Tell yourself okay, in the next two months I want to have at least 15. Mm-hmm. You know and work towards that. You know what I mean? Begin to like monitor that progress organically begin to build yeah. it and then you'll be more and then you begin to see the progress you are making and you able to, and you'll be able to plan and be able to plan ahead and what because you know who your fans are you mm-hmm. know who you are reaching out to there's another thing i learned recently which is a third thing which is very important but mm-hmm. I, i learned it recently if you ask me this before <laughs> i learned it i was not going to say it yeah. but i learned it recently do not want to be part of an industry find your people and reach them what does that look like that is like okay so there's this perception like oh there is the gospel industry mm-hmm. there's the secular industry okay mm-hmm. so what happens now when you are in the when you are in the gospel industry what you're trying to do is you're trying to blow in the gospel industry mm-hmm. that's what you're trying to do so yeah. now you're confined in that same area so now you're trying to reach the people that all of these other gospel artists reach because mm-hmm. those are the people that you think are making up the gospel industry yeah. same thing with the secular industry the fans that your maps reaches the fans that the mac do and chefy and all these guys reach mm-hmm. those are the fans that you are thinking about in your head yeah. because that's the industry but what i'm saying is that do not belong to an industry you can just the most important thing an artist can do is find the people the right people to listen to you find the right people for your music you yeah. know so because so, when you belong to an industry if you're not oh i'm in the secular industry you're going to start aiming for those your maps fans Mm. And then and, and that's why people easily fall into those things where now you're all making music that sounds the same you're all trying to feature all your maps because you're yeah. trying to reach his fan base that is industry thinking mm-hmm. but now thank god to the, uh, thank god for the internet mm-hmm. you can identify who your fans are and you can reach them and and and, and best way to give an example of how this work was Emily mm-hmm. you see when we tried it with Emily you see we had, yeah. Emily like it was kind of like she was able to identify who were able to identify who her fans were like our uh, name of fans back here. same thing with Natasha Chansa mm-hmm. you know she's got a whole different movement that is different from this other movement you see what i mean yeah. so it's about finding your fans and your fans and getting your fans to listen to your stuff so don't try to belong to industries because that's when now you always be following this to my formulas that have been created mm-hmm. which are not even in line with your plans yeah. so do not fear monitor your progress organically and don't try to belong to an industry just find your fan base which albums have you worked on that you can remember Okay um I'd say Love and Lich Ebo Chungu mm-hmm. Love and Lich Deluxe Broken English Pompey um the new Pompey album the Pole Pole um Esther Chungu's Epro I did the mixing and mastering for that one I also executive produced the new one Umwala and okay. Natasha Chansa's Genesis yeah where can people find you Facebook that's church ulukuta on Instagram as well it's the same thing is church ulukuta and uh on Twitter is at my name is church yeah that's Either about produ- do you do production or do you just engineer now and how do people work with you I do production and I don't do okay I do production but I but I work with some other people that I bring in as well to help me out and what not so mm-hmm. I I have uh, some people that I call for guitars and keys and what most of the stuff that I do now is engineering mixing and mastering and how people can get to work with me <laughs> <laughs> so do they dm you on instagram is there an email how do you no. prefer people to reach you uh people reach me most of the people that reach me they usually call the number that is on my facebook and sometimes they dm me on instagram just reach me. Okay. they they all reach me on my social i could just say it that way okay. and some people call me directly they get the number from somebody who knows somebody Okay. Who owes someone money? <laughs> <laughs> When can we expect another album from? <laughs> Cuz I saw I saw something I think yesterday mm. Chumasu Chumasu posted a clip. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah. It seems so, something is on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I I've been working. I've been working on yeah. on 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 something new, mm-hmm. you know. So I've been just putting it together and it's it's definitely this year. Okay. And in less than three months. Are you doing the same collaborative approach with different artists? Yes, pretty much, yes. Any new people that we can expect? Any new people? Yeah. Slab D. Oh, J Rocks. Okay. Uh of course Natasha Chansa. Mhm. Always all the time. James Sakala. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's quite, it's quite an interesting album. Yeah, I can, I can see it's not what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not what it is. Trust me, it's yeah. it's not going to be what you're expecting. It it's a yeah. very very different album, but you you will not yeah. regret listening to it okay. so it's, I, i'm i'm saying this it's my best work so far 
That's what I'm saying. Okay. Mm. No. And that's we'll, coming we'll, from me. To our later. To our later team for you. So <laughs> what would be your last words? Specifically, um, I show that life, maybe this person is an orphan. Mm. Situation, the family man is a promising academic career. Family, na na yari, shupa fie. What advice would you give this person? What words would you give this person? It's very difficult. It's yeah. very difficult to give like words that could like change people's lives in situations. What situation. would you have wanted to be told in that in those moments when you felt like it's just you and no one else is for you? You are enough. You are enough. Yes. You are enough. Everything that you believe in is good enough. You don't mm-hmm. you you're going to you're going to learn new things mm-hmm. and you're going to have to improve on certain things. You're mm-hmm. going to have to and learn other things you know yeah but you need to understand that only you can love you better than anyone else can and only you can look out for you better than anyone else can it's hard it's going to get tough you know but that's what life is like life is going to get tough at some point we can't predict it unfortunately you know but we can only do our best like i said last time like you can only do 50% of yeah. what we can do and the other 50 is dependent on other people but do your 50%. Do what you can for yourself. Love yourself. That's the first guys that that I I can stress this in anyway. love yourself. Mm-hmm. Not selfishly. Yeah. Where you begin to hurt other people in case of in in as is in in return of loving yourself, mm-hmm. but love you enough to know that you are enough and God created you for a purpose and you just need to hold on just a little bit longer to see it come to life. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was. I think that's what I would have wanted to be told. Okay. Yeah. Ah, we. Thank you for your time. Ah, we. Boy.